I wrecked my tank. Hold up. No, you didn't. I mean, if your salinity's swinging all over the place, it might feel like you did. But salinity swings can be sneaky and your reef doesn't like surprises. The good news, you can definitely fix it. So let's break it down and get you on the path to an optimal and stable salinity. But first, let's talk about why salinity matters. Salinity is one of the core fundamentals of reef keeping, the literal salt in salt water, and it affects everything. Not only does it determine the concentration of sodium chloride in your salt water, but it also sets the levels for all major and minor trace elements your reef depends on. And beyond chemistry, salinity directly impacts your livestock on a cellular level, especially invertebrates. When salinity drops suddenly, inverts like snails, shrimp, and corals can suffer osmotic shock. Their cells swell or burst due to the imbalance in osmotic pressure, and yes, that can often mean death. Even if it gets too low over time, it can be a huge problem since their biology has evolved to function in a saltwater environment. Fish are thankfully a bit more resilient. They can actively regulate salinity, but they're not immune. In critically low salinity, fish start absorbing water faster than they can excrete it, leading to internal swelling. And in critically high salinity, they lose water too quickly and risk dehydration. All of this to say, stability is key. And for your reef to thrive, not only does your salinity have to be within a healthy range, it needs to be consistent. So what is the ideal salinity? For reef tanks, aim for 32 to 35 PPT or 1.024 to 1.026 specific gravity. I personally shoot for 35 PPT or 1.026 SG because it matches natural seawater, which is the baseline that corals and invertebrates evolved to thrive in. Now, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, you probably already have mixing up a fresh batch of salt water down pat. I mean, there are mixing instructions on the bucket. It's not horribly hard to do you're probably here for another reason. Salinity problems don't usually come from that one task. They sneak in elsewhere. So let's talk about how and what you can do about it. First, the tool you use to measure salinity matters. Your very first line of defense is the tool that you use to measure salinity. And if it's not giving you accurate readings, you're building a house on sand. The worst offender, bar none, are swing arm hydrometers. They're cheap, they're easy to misuse, impossible to calibrate, and prone to error from bubbles, biofilm, and even just slight tilts. I know they're prevalent, but they're just not a reliable tool for your reef tank. So what is reliable? Refractometers, accurate, precise, simple enough to use, and easy to calibrate. Digital refractometers, same principle, easier to read, also recalibratable. Not sure that's a word, but it sounded good. Salinity pens, quick and convenient for checks, especially for testing your aquarium on the fly, but they require frequent calibration to maintain accuracy. And high precision glass hydrometers. These are the gold standard, no calibration needed and extremely accurate, but a bit of a pain to use. Think of it as your backup reference to make sure your daily use tool is on point. No matter which tool you use, save for that glass hydrometer, keeping your tool calibrated is very important. They should all have recommendations right from the manufacturer for how often you should calibrate and what to calibrate with. But a good rule of thumb is to calibrate once a month at minimum using a proper calibration solution, not just your RODI water. This is a key step in making sure that all the testing you do, whether it's while you're mixing up fresh salt water or just checking in on your reef tank, isn't for nothing. And don't forget, salinity is temperature sensitive. Always test your freshly mixed up salt water at the same temperature as your reef tank to make sure the salinity is at the correct level at the correct temperature. Now let's talk about the two different types of salinity swings. Slow, sneaky, or fast, dangerous. Slow salinity swings are the kind you don't notice right away. They build up over many days, weeks, or even months, and usually happen when your ATO runs dry and isn't refilling evaporation, you're using a miscalibrated tool to measure salinity, your peristaltic pumps for your automatic water changes fall out of sync, or you're dosing two-part calcium and alkalinity. Yes, that does add salt to the system over time as well. It is the sneakiest culprit. Preventing them is also really easy. Test your aquarium salinity weekly, that's it. Catch it before it ever becomes a problem. 
Correcting them is also simple. If salinity is creeping up, remove small amounts of salt water and top off with RODI until you're back on target. If it's creeping down, use slightly saltier water for your next few water changes to bring it up slowly. And keep your gear maintained. That means fill your ATO reservoir on time and keep those peristaltic pumps in their tubing maintained and calibrated. Fast salinity swings. Whoa. This is the real help I wrecked my tank moment. Fast swings are abrupt changes in salinity that happen in hours or days, not weeks, and can kill inverts and stress fish before you even know what's happening. The most common causes are an ATO that fails on with a very large reservoir dumping gallons of RDI into your tank, an auto water change system that fails or has malfunctioned, removing salt water but not replenishing it, leading to your ATO compensating with fresh water, as well as user error, usually in the form of a large water change made with improperly mix salt water with a salinity that is either way too high or way too low. And how do you know this is happening? Well, you're going to know because your tank looks off, your corals are closed, your inverts are either sluggish or frantic, and your fish are acting weird. After looking for any equipment failures, which could be the cause, salinity should be one of the first things you check. So what do you do if you end up in this situation? Well, if salinity is way too low, calculate how much salt is needed to bring it back to safe levels, add it slowly, ideally into a sump where it can dissolve completely before reaching your display. If salinity is way too high, replace small amounts of tank water with RODI in stages or perform large water changes using water at a slightly lower salinity over a couple of days. This isn't to say you won't experience some losses. A large salinity swing can be pretty catastrophic, but this is the best chance at making sure you suffer minimal losses or save as many of your pets as possible. While regularly testing salinity isn't going to be effective at catching a fast swing, you can use an aquarium controller to help prevent some of these disasters before they start by notifying you the moment your ATO is empty or by shutting down pumps or equipment if you're out of salt water for your auto water change system, which means the salinity goes from a potentially rapid swing into a very slow swing, giving you a ton of leeway to correct it before it becomes an immediate threat for your reef. If you take one thing away from this video, it is that salinity issues are super avoidable. All it takes is using accurate tools and keeping them calibrated, testing your aquarium once a week, keeping your ATO reservoir full, and staying on top of maintenance. And if a worst case scenario does happen, you've now got the tools and know-how to bring things back from the brink. Listen, getting salinity right is easy, but pests on the other hand, less easy. But I've got your back. I show you how to identify, prevent, and treat for the most common and pesky of pests, from algae to anemones in this playlist right here. Don't let your reef or you get caught with your pants down. Check it out.